It feels like every time a new iPhone launches or a new version of iOS comes out, some percentage of people who had issues with Wi-Fi, Bluetooth, or cellular networking get their problems solved, and some percentage who didn't start having issues for the first time. That's probably a reflection of just how complex modern radios and carriers are, and all of our setups that go along with them. But as we move to mesh networks, gigabit LTE and 5G, Bluetooth 5.0 and AirPlay 2, these systems can't just keep getting faster and more complicated. They need to get easier and absolutely, point final, more reliable. I'm Rene Ritchie. Welcome back to Vector. Thank you so much for joining me. Let's get into it. The latest cases in point, complaints around iPhone XS and iPhone XS Max wireless networking. For cellular, it seems like primarily Verizon customers in the US are seeing fewer bars in fringe places, those areas where getting and keeping a signal is already a challenge. The prevailing theory is that Apple has gone all in on Intel modems this year, where previously they used a mix of Qualcomm modems for legacy CDMA carriers, namely Verizon and Sprint, and Intel for GSM carriers, namely AT&T, T-Mobile, and almost all of the rest of the world. Infineon, the original iPhone modem supplier, was bought by Intel in 2011, and since then, Intel has desperately been trying to become competitive with Qualcomm, including and especially for Apple's business. I guess Intel figures if they can't get their x86 chips anywhere near Apple's A-series or the iPhone, their modems are better than nothing. The problem is, Qualcomm is near predatory in its business practices, so much so it's been investigated by multiple jurisdictions. You see, Qualcomm's business isn't really chips, it's patents, and while most of the time, if you want your patents to become part of an international standard, you have to agree to license those patents under FRAND, which is fair, reasonable, and non-discriminatory terms, Qualcomm has managed to keep a lot of key wireless patents at a premium. It's Qualcomm's contention that radios are so valuable, so integral, that device makers, including but not limited to Apple, should pay not just for the parts, but for a percentage of revenue for the privilege of using them. And I mean, good for Qualcomm. You go. You get yours. It's ultimately short-sighted and unsustainable, though. Cameras and other components are arguably just as important, just as integral these days. And imagine if nine different parts makers all wanted 20% each of retail. Let the patent lawyers do that math. But it makes both courts and customers extremely, extremely cranky. It's also led to vicious legal battles between Qualcomm and, among others, Apple. In this specific case, with Apple accusing Qualcomm of price gouging and Qualcomm accusing Apple of, and I kid you not, ratting them out to the feds and sharing trade secrets with Intel. Now, all of that is Apple and Qualcomm's problem. None of it should affect us in any way. But since Apple wants nothing to do with Qualcomm right now, it looks like everyone is getting Intel modems this year instead. Apple went so far as to destroy the x-axis symmetry on the bottom of the iPhone XS and iPhone XS Max in a way we haven't seen since the heady days of the headphone jack in order to add an extra antenna for 4x4 MIMO and provide the best, most flexible reception possible. If you're on AT&T or T-Mobile, the good news is the new antenna in iPhone XS and iPhone XS Max should work even better for you. Now, of course, a lot can depend on your precise position relative to the towers and everything from your case to your wall to the weather in between because radio science is still terrible and demands sacrifices for every gain. If you were on Verizon or Sprint though, switching to a new modem might be causing you some pain. My strong hunch is Apple and the carriers will be pushing out updates in the near future that, based on all of the data they've seen to date, fine tunes everything and fixes the vast majority of problems for the vast majority of people. In the meantime, if nothing is working for you and it's driving you out of your frequencyed mind, here are a few things you can try. One, toggle airplane mode on and off, just to get the radio to reconnect and hopefully grab a better signal. Two, toggle LTE on and off in settings, cellular, cellular data options. If you don't want to lose your connection, but you do want to try for a better LTE connection, or even if you want to subsist on 3G in an area where LTE just won't work. If you don't mind escalating, go to settings, general, reset, and reset network settings. It's a bit of a pain, but it can give your new Intel modem a new start. And of course, the nuclear option. Wipe everything and set up your iPhone as new. That's an incredible pain in the apps, even in the era where almost everything just syncs back, but it can knock out problems like nothing else can. And yeah, make all the reinstall Windows jokes you want. I should note, wacky as it may sound, doing a restore over iTunes from your PC could help where on-device can't. 
Same with Wi-Fi, which mostly seems to be suffering from an over-eagerness to jump on the 2.4 gigahertz networks instead of the generally more reliable 5 gigahertz networks. If that's happening to you and you don't need the 2.4 gigahertz part of your network, you can typically toggle it off in your router settings and force your iPhone to do the right thing, at least when it's on your network or a network you control. If you need 2.4 gigahertz for legacy devices or you're on a network you can't control, you can try some of the same troubleshooting steps I outlined above, starting with going to settings, Wi-Fi, and simply forgetting the network and adding it back. Then you can escalate up to resetting the network settings or doing a clean install, painful as it is. Again, we go through this with every new phone and every new update, so it's nothing new. But that doesn't make it any less frustrating. It absolutely makes it more frustrating. Why can't we just get machine learning algorithms that chew through massive crowdsourced data sets to constantly real-time tune all of our wireless connections all of the time? I don't know, but I want them. Almost enough that I don't really care if it brings Skynet along with it. It's getting to the point where I'm half convinced this is less science and more mystic arts, but I've been doing my best to learn as much about it as I possibly can. If you're interested in doing the same, then check out Brilliant. It's a problem-solving website and app that teaches you to think like a scientist. Instead of passively listening to lectures or podcasts or videos, as much as I love that you watch these videos, you get to master concepts by solving fun and challenging problems, and Brilliant provides the tools and frameworks that you need to tackle these challenges. Brilliant's thought-provoking content based around the breaking up of complexities into bite-sized, understandable, digestible chunks will lead you from curiosity to mastery. So what are you waiting for? Get on over to brilliant.org vector and get started now. Thanks, Brilliant. These problems likely only affect a small percentage of people. But at iPhone scale, there's really no such thing. Every percentage is huge. So let me know if you're one of those people and if any of the suggestions I made helped mitigate or fix the issues for you, or if something else did instead. And if you're not having any problems, let me know how iPhone XS or iPhone XS Signal is doing for you. Is it faster in more places? <laughs> Speed test time. Hit like, hit subscribe, and thank you so much for watching.